It is so good to be at Life Church. Come on, if you love Switch, somebody make some noise out there. Hey, so for the next three weeks, I'm gonna be coming right to all of you there at Switch. And I wanna be talking to you for the next three weeks really on this idea of evangelism and reaching people. And I want us to use a key verse for the next few weeks out of Mark chapter one, Mark chapter one, verse 16. Let me read it for you. And uh, then we're gonna kind of preach some of God's word. This is what the Bible says. It says, as Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen. Verse 17, Jesus says, come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and followed him. I wanna talk for the next three weeks from this subject, gone fishing, gone fishing fishing. And would you pray with me? And let's ask God to speak to us. Lord, we thank you so much that you're here. Lord, we thank you that you're moving. God, I pray, Lord, that you would raise up evangelists right here in Switch, God, that we'd go and reach people for you, that we would be the light of the world in our cities. We love you. We praise you. And if you believe it, all of God's people said? All of God's people said? Come on, make a little bit of noise out there. You know, What I love about the Bible is the Bible is that one book that when you read it, it tends to read you. (laughs) And when you're reading the Bible, it's really important that you take time to ask questions. Because as you ask questions, what you'll find is that, guess what? God will start to speak to you in those questions. Notice what we find here in Mark chapter 1 is that Jesus is walking uh, by this sea and he sees some of these fishermen out there. And these are going to be the early disciples. And he looks at them. This is what he says. He says, come, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Notice what Jesus says. He says, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Here's my question for the next three weeks as we study together. If Jesus says, come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men, the question is, if I'm not fishing, am I really following Jesus? If I'm not fishing, am I really following Jesus? Because Jesus says, if you follow, you'll fish. If you fish, you're following. Is anybody following? Let's make some noise out there. Come on now. (laughs) If I'm not fishing, am I really following? I believe that every one of us, we are called to reach our friends, to reach our neighbors, to reach our schools with the love of Jesus. And guess what? None of us are with an excuse. All of us are called to do this. If we're following Jesus, we're fishing for people. I'll never forget, I was uh, in college and I was home for the holidays, and uh, I was getting ready to go back to Tennessee, and I was saying goodbye to my family, and in my family, whenever we kind of leave on a trip, we always do what we call a holy huddle. You can do this in your home if you want to. Uh, We all get together, and we pray, and it was my grandmother's turn to pray, and I don't know who your grandmother is, but my grandmother, she's awesome, but she prays really long. Have you ever been like in a small group of people, and someone starts praying, and you're like, okay, hurry it up, and so how do Christians say hurry it up? We say amen, all right, (laughs) amen. So I'm going amen, Nana, come on, amen. Amen, Nana. And while Nana's praying, she gets out of formation. She gets out of the huddle. She comes. She puts something in my pocket. In fact, her hand goes into my pocket. Now, normally I don't let people put their hands in my pocket, but hey, Nana's old and she can put her hand wherever she wants, praise God. So she put her hand in my pocket and I noticed she left something there. And so now my mind is completely fixated on what is in my pocket. Supposed to be on Jesus, but it's really on what's in my pocket pocket. And so finally she finishes up the prayer. She's gone through all the names of Jesus. And I hug her, I kiss her. I say goodbye. And when I walk out the door, I put my hand in my pocket and I discover she's put a brand new, fresh, crisp from the bank, $100 bill. Somebody say amen right there. Yeah, exactly. Favor ain't fair. This is our God. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's our provider. Okay. As a college student, $100, I could eat for like, you know, months on something like that. So I'm going, this is good, man. This is the year of Jubilee. And so I make my way out of the house and I I get onto the airplane. I'm just thanking God the whole way, going, God is good, you know, check this out. He he gave me this money and I'm just feeling good about life, looking good, feeling good. And so I I get off the airplane and I come down and I'm on the curb. I'm waiting for my ride in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm just sitting there, I'm just thanking God, God, you're good all the time and all the time, God is good. Yes, you are, Lord. And while I'm praising God, waiting for my ride, I see this old kind of car. It's like smoking and it's like backfiring. And all of a sudden it pulls up right in front of me. And there's this little grandmother behind the driving wheel. And I look at her and as she pulls up, it's like the car sort of breathes its last breath. You know, it's like, it just smokes out. And now she can't get the ignition to turn over. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this lady. And I said, poor old lady. Somebody ought to help her. 
And it was in that moment that I heard a voice speak to me saying, Rich, give her the $100 so that she can get her car fixed. In that moment, I said, get thee behind me, Satan, and I walked away. <laughs> There's no way that could be God, right? There's no way God would tell me to do that. So are any of you out there like me that when God starts to speak to you and you don't like what he's saying, you try to just kind of get away, you know, you just try to walk away from the scene. And so I did the Jonah. I walked away from the scene, but then again, God spoke to me a second time saying, Rich, go give her the $100. I said, it can't be God. I walked away as far as I could. The voice came back saying, Rich, give her the $100. I finally said, fine, I'll do it. You ever meet people that are like serving Jesus, but they're angry while they're doing it, you know? You ever meet an angry usher in church? That's a scary person right there, right? You know, sit here. Okay, yes, I will. You know, like you get very nervous. And so I'm like, fine. And so I'm kind of mad. I'm walking over. I'm like, this is crazy, you know? I'm gonna go over and like give this woman the $100. And so I walk over to where this car is. And as I, as I pull up to the car, I kind of, I say, you know, hey, hey ma'am, you know, how are you? My name's, my name's Rich and um, I'm a Christian. And um, what that means is sometimes I think that God speaks to me and I'm looking at your situation here and uh, I feel like you could use some help. So I wanna give you $100. She looks back and she says, oh, son. She goes, you don't need to give me anything. I'm a Christian too. I said, oh my goodness, nice to meet you. I didn't know there was more of us out there. How are you, you know? I said, well, ma'am, I'm looking at your car. You need this money. She said, I don't need the money. I said, ma'am, you need this money right now. Take it in Jesus' name. She said, I don't need your money. I'm fine. Now I'm arguing with this woman. At any moment, I'm sure, right, that God's gonna open up the heavens and Gabriel with long flowing blonde hair is gonna come out and go, dun, dun, dun. Rich just obeyed, but that didn't happen. <laughs> Instead, this woman, she refused my charity. She wouldn't even take the money. And I walked away with the money in my hand and I had a conversation with God that I'll never forget. I said, God, where were you on that one? Didn't you just tell me to go over there and give her the money? And all of a sudden I heard God speak to me. He said, Rich, I was just wondering if you were willing to obey me. I was just wondering if you're willing to obey me even if you did not succeed. See, I think what's going on today is that many of us, we're in our high schools right now, and some of us, we're willing to step out for God as long as that means that we're gonna walk into promotion or as long as that means the spotlight is gonna land on us. But really, hear me loud and clear. God is not calling us to be successful. God is calling us to be faithful. Hear me, our job is obedience. It's God's job to bring about the outcome. You and I, we need to step out and we just need to obey God. God is not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. And he's looking for people that will say, I will step out even if I fail, I'm willing to be obedient. Come on, if you believe that, somebody make a little bit of noise all over this place. Will you be obedient? Jesus said, come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. If I'm not fishing, am I really following Jesus? Because if I follow Jesus, I'm going to fish. Isn't it funny how many people come up with great excuses as to why they can't serve, why they can't give, why they can't reach people? I, I ran up to this guy yesterday who's been in our church for, you know, six months. I said, hey, bro, man, when are you going to start serving in church? He said, you know, Pastor Rich, I'm really praying about that right now. Praying about serving in church? People come up with the funniest stuff that they say they're praying about. I'm praying if I should start becoming a tither. I'm praying if I should bring my friends to switch. I'm praying if I ought to go to church on Sunday. You know what God would say? God would say, quit praying and start obeying. <laughs> God is looking for people who are willing to be obedient. And I don't care who you are or what you're going through. If you'll make your life available to God, you will see him work through your life in an incredible, mighty awesome way. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the sharpest. But if you'll just say, God, I'm willing to follow you. I'm willing to trust you. He will use your life. God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And all you have to do is open up this Bible and you will see that God uses crazy people to do his work. You're saying, oh, I'm not very gifted. I'm not very talented. I don't think you've read the Bible. Because the Bible is full of the jokers and the smokers and the midnight tokers. And he uses those guys, man. He uses crazy people. You think you have problems? You don't have problems compared to the people in the Bible. You are without excuse. Noah, he was a drunk. Abraham was way too old to be used by God. Definitely too old to be having kids. Guy was 90, 100 years old when he was having babies. That's not just crazy, that's nasty, yo. 
Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Joseph was abused. Gideon was afraid. Moses had a stuttering problem. Samson was a womanizer and he had long hair. My God. <laughs> Rahab was a prostitute. Hello. David, man, this guy, he had multiple affairs. Isaiah, he preached naked. Can you imagine that next time you came to switch youth ministry? Hey, no, I'm kidding. We're not going to do that right now. Jonah ran from God, man. I mean, Martha, she worried about everything. The disciples, they fell asleep while praying. Don't act like you've never done that before. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus, Lazarus was dead. Oh, come on, Switch. I'm telling you, God can use dead people if he wants to. Certainly, he can use you in your high school. He can use you in your neighborhood. He can use you wherever you are. Somebody give God a shout of praise all over this place. God wants to use you. God is, is dying. Take it back. God died to use you. He laid his life down. And he said, the same power that conquered death, hell, and the grave, it lives in you. And I wonder today, are you a person who says, I want to follow Jesus? If you are, well, then guess what? Jesus says, if you follow me, you're going to go fishing for me. Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. If I'm not fishing, am I really following Jesus? Today, if you want to go fishing, all it starts with is having an available spirit and saying, I will be obedient. Even if I fail, I'm not called to be successful. I'm called to be faithful. Hey, can I pray for you, Switch, really quick? I want to pray right now that God would begin to speak to you and that you would delay no longer and rather you would rise up and that you would be obedient to this call. He is making you into fishers of men. It's time that you are found gone fishing. Lord, I pray right now, Lord, for those that are watching this broadcast, Lord, that you'd begin to speak to them, that you'd begin to equip them. Lord, I pray that right now people would understand, God, that they are not too young to be used by you. But God, right now, Lord, I pray that you start to call, Lord, high schoolers and junior hires, those that are watching right now, Lord, that they would go back to their schools and they would see their school as a mission field, Lord. They would see their neighborhood as a mission field. They would see their sports team as a mission field, Lord. Lord, that they would step out and carry the light of Jesus everywhere that they go. Lord, make us strong followers, Lord. Make us bold, Lord. Make us obedient, God. We are available. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use us. We love you. We praise you. And everybody said, come on, let's give the Lord a big shout of praise.